We now turn our attention to linear regression. We'll cover regression in two parts. In the first part, we'll just look at simple linear regression. In the second part, we'll look at multiple linear regression. So let's consider a simple example, a motivating example. Let's say we're thinking about two people, A and B, and the likelihood of them buying a luxury or a sports car. Okay. Now, without any further information, we're just given two people in likelihood, so we really cannot say much about what is the likelihood of their buying a luxury car or who is more likely to buy a luxury car. On the other hand, suppose I add some additional attribute information like the amount of money each person has. So one is a, a person who's loaded with a lot of money and the second person is just a tramp. Then obviously we can say that the likelihood that A is going to buy a, a luxury car or a sports car is higher than that of B buying the same thing. Right? So the general idea then is that in predictive analytics or data mining, relationships between attributes play a big role in our ability to perform the prediction. So in our present example, the amount of money that a person has, the wealth, is definitely going to have an influence on their likelihood of buying a sports car. Okay, So this is what we are trying to do in predictive analytics, trying to exploit the relationship between various attributes or specifically between independent or predictor attributes and the target attribute to use that information to arrive at our predictions. Let us consider a situation where a family has gone on a vacation trip and uh, the goal is to predict how much money they will spend on this trip. Now you may say why is that an important question? Well it's possible that they're going to stay in a resort and the management of the resort wants to predict for every family who has made a reservation how much money they'll spend. This may They may then use this information to predict their own cash flows and manage the cash flows and things like that. Okay, so uh, the context is that of a, re a hotel, a resort. They've got a lot of reservations that people have made ahead of time, let's say a month, couple of months ahead of time. And this resort wants to predict for the next month how much money they will make in terms of people spending the money, right? So the problem then boils down to every individual family how much money is it going to spend in the resort, okay? So the idea is to predict vacation spending, and we may say the vacation spending is related to the annual income of the family, the number of days they're going to spend at the resort, the resort location itself, how far away they are from home, perhaps how many members of the family are going to, uh, you know, to vacation at the resort, and so on and so on. Clearly, we can say that all of these things have an influence on how much money that family will spend at the resort, okay? So predictive analytics is all about exploiting relationships between attributes to arrive at our prediction. So we are trying to say that spending is a function of certain attributes like income, number of days, location, etc., etc. These are the three we'll consider now. In simple linear regression, we are trying to find an equation of this form that is specifically, we are trying to find the values for beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, such that this expression is a good predictor of the value of spending. Okay, so in other words, we have historical data on income, number of days, location, and spending for a number of families. Okay, let's say we have that information for a thousand families. Now, based on that data, we want to find values of beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3, such that this whole expression becomes a very good predictor of the actual spending. Okay, Clearly, this is not going to exactly tell us what the spending is, but we want something that makes a good prediction of the spending without too much of error. This is what we are trying to achieve in simple linear regression. Why is it called linear regression? It's called linear regression because we've got the target attribute spending expressed as a function which looks like intercept plus a function of three other independent or predictor attributes, right? And of course, we're not saying that we'll be able to get a model that will do an exact prediction and therefore there will be a small error term or a residual. 
which is the difference between the actual spending and the predicted spending that the model predicts. Okay, so that's what linear regression is. It's called linear regression because this is a linear expression. None of the attributes, income, days, or location, is raised to any power other than one. Each of them has uh, is raised to the power of one. Therefore, we call it linear regression. Why should we look for a linear expression? Why not look for a more complex, complicated expression like a quadratic expression or a mixed expression with linear and quadratic terms and so on? Why should we look for a linear expression? The reason is that linear expressions are simple to understand and usually provide reasonably good results. And that's why it's become a common practice to go for linear expressions. Computationally, it's manageable. It's not too difficult to compute. Theoretically, uh, one may be better off in terms of accuracy by looking for expressions of other degrees. But in practice, linear expressions have become popular. So let's take a clear example with our uh, Boston housing data. So that's a data set in which we've got information about a number of neighborhoods. Of course, each neighborhood had lots of, has lots of homes, but uh, every row of our data set is just a summary of each neighborhood. And therefore, we've got the average number of rooms per household in the neighborhood, and that's what is on the x-axis, average number of rooms per household in a particular neighborhood, and the median value of a home in that neighborhood. Okay, so every data point is about a neighborhood, and for every neighborhood, we've got lots of information. Among those, average number of rooms, median value of a home. Okay, so if you look at the data, broadly speaking, it looks like this. And you can say, well, broadly speaking, this looks like a linear relationship, right? It's obviously not exactly a linear relationship because if that were the case, then every single point would lie on a straight line. But this scatter plot obviously does not show that. It shows the points are scattered all over the place, but it's very clear that we can see a linear trend right here, okay? So clearly the predictions that we can get if we do select a linear model for this. The predictions we're going to get is are going to be somewhat approximate, but that's about the best we can expect. Okay, There's no point in this particular example in trying to get more complex with uh, more quadratic or higher expressions. Okay, So this is what uh, we are talking about, and linear modeling uh, regression is probably the most popular form of regression. In simple linear regression, we are trying to predict one attribute based on one other attribute. In other words, we'll have one predictor attribute, one target attribute. That's it. Okay. And the equation, therefore, will be y, which is the target attribute, equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times x, which is the predictor attribute, plus some error term because our prediction of beta 0 plus beta 1 x is not going to be exact. As we already saw, the lines will not fall on a point. Uh, the points will not fall on an exact line, and therefore there will be some kind of error term, and we'll discuss this shortly. Okay, so that's the target attribute, and this is the independent attribute or the predictor attribute, and that's your residual or error term. Okay, let's consider a concrete example. Let's say we've got data about several households and the number of rooms, average number of rooms, and the price. Okay, or not average number of rooms, actual number of rooms and the price. Okay, so now the first household has two rooms and its price is 125,000. The second household has four rooms and the price is 200,000. The last household has three rooms and the price is 185,000. And we are saying, okay, let's build a model to predict the price based on the number of rooms. And we would like to fit an equation like beta 0 plus beta 1 times rooms and use that to make a prediction. Graphically speaking, it's going to look like this. We are trying to say, Rooms is here on the x-axis, price is on the y-axis, and this is, let's say, our data. The dots represent each of the individual points. You know, for example, let's say this is two rooms, and that's 125,000. And let's say that's four rooms and 185,000 or whatever, right? So those are the points. And we are trying to say that we want to fit this equation, beta 0 plus beta 1 times rooms. And that's what that straight line is. Forget the epsilon for the moment. Beta 0 plus beta 1 times rooms is that straight line. Okay, so we'll use this line to make predictions. We are trying to find this line. And then later on, for suppose we are given a new house and we are told the number of rooms, 
we can say where what will be the price for that based on if you're given this as the number of rooms we can say okay uh, the point is here and therefore the price is going to be here this is the goal of linear regression that we'll plot a line and then use that particular line for future predictions okay so the beta zero actually represents the intercept or where this line is going to meet the y-axis and beta one is actually the slope of that line and the slope represents the change in price for a unit change in the predictor variable which is predictor attribute rooms right so for example if the rooms went from two to three what is going to be the change in price of that household okay so the slope really represents this change in price for a unit change in rooms or more uh, abstractly the change in the target attribute for a unit change in the predictor attribute so now if we take a specific point let's consider this particular point this is the actual value okay so it's got some number of rooms and it's got a certain price but the model predicts the price to be that okay so the actual price is this much and the model predicts the price to be that much and therefore the difference between the two is our error for this point some people like to call it the residual for that point which is the difference between the reality and the model prediction okay the model prediction is simply beta 0 plus beta 1 times rooms and that's what this point here is but in reality there's this whole error okay in reality the value is this and therefore the model is not getting an exact value so in general when we have a linear regression line for every point we've got some error which is the deviation between what the model predicts which is the value that the line predicts and the actual value there's some residual or error and that's what this epsilon value is okay and for every point we can find this out so if we look at this we see that for every single point we are able to calculate what the difference is between the actual price and the price that the model predicts which happens to be the distance between the point and the line that's what the error is for every single point okay so if you expand that to this particular example let us say we've got the data like this which is uh, the rooms and the price and this is the actual price 125,000 but let's say that we fitted a linear regression model and the price is 135,000 therefore the difference between the actual price and the model prediction or actual price minus model prediction is minus 10,000 I've put minus 10,000 in brackets uh, similarly the second house the actual price is 200,000 the model predicted 210,000 once again the error is minus 10,000 for the third house the actual price is 175,000 the model predicted 155,000 so the error or residual is 20,000 and so on okay now what would it mean for the model to be a good model right what would what would we expect if the model is very good if the model is very good we would expect that all these errors are very small right ideally the error should be zero that means the model would be perfect every predicted value is exactly the same as the actual value and therefore the error would be zero the error or the residual would be zero okay so the the smaller this value is the better our model is okay now unfortunately if we want to find the quality of the entire model we cannot simply add up all these residual values and take the result because some of the values are positive some of the values are negative the positive and negative would cancel out okay so therefore if there were lots of errors on one side and lots of errors on the other side they will all cancel out and the error will come out to close to zero and it will tell us it's a good model whereas the model is full of errors okay so we cannot just add up all the errors and therefore what do we do let's take a look at this okay so what we are searching for is to find that line which gives a very low amount of error okay but what do we mean by low amount of error for each individual value we know what a low error is it's close to zero but when we look at the overall model we are not just able to add up the errors we'll see what we're going to do about that but we want to find that line which gives the least amount of error and we'll describe precisely what we mean by this error okay so let's say we've got this as our data and we fit this model the line to it and we know what the number of errors is okay 
So we can fit uh, one line. That will give a certain amount of error. But that's not the only possibility. We may be able to fit another line. That will give a different error because now the difference between the actual value and the predicted value is going to be different. Or we could fit a third line. And again, the error in this case is going to be different, right? So we are seeing that we've got lots of different lines that we can predict, that we can fit to this data. In fact, we can fit an infinite number of lines, right? From among all those lines, we want to choose the line that gives the least amount of error. This is what linear regression tries to do. From among all the possible lines, find the line which gives the least amount of error. What exactly do we mean by least amount of error? Let's look at this. We've got an infinite possible number of lines that we can put through those set of points, but we want the line in which the yi is the actual value, y hat is the predicted value. And of course, i stands for the ith point. Because after all, when we add the total error, we're going to add the error for every single point. And that is where the i comes in. So i equals 1 is the first point, 2 is the second point, and so on. Okay. So yi is the actual value, y hat is the model prediction, and yi minus y hat is the error for the ith point. Okay. We cannot simply add up the errors because we already saw that the negative errors and the positive errors would cancel out. So we do the simple trick of simply squaring the error, right? So that is why we take yi minus y hat here and yi minus y hat square it and therefore the negatives and positives all become positive. And we add that up across all values from i equals 1 to i equals n. Okay, so effectively speaking, if we go back to the previous slide, this slide, instead of just adding up all these individual errors, what we're going to do is to square up each one of them so that all the negatives also become positive and add up the squared values instead. That's really what we have done in this particular slide here. Okay, so that's the total error. And in linear regression, all we are trying to do is to choose the line which has the smallest value for this expression. That is, the sum of the squared errors is the least, right? So if you go back to the previous slide here, which we showed a number of lines, we've got an infinite number of possible lines. But what we want to do is to find that line which minimizes the sum of the squared errors. Okay, that's what we are trying to do in linear regression. This is called the least squares criterion, least squared error criterion. So linear regression finds the best line, which is the least squares line, the line that minimizes the least square, the sum of squared errors. That's what linear regression finds. Happily for us, we will not get into the mathematics of how exactly that line is to be found it looks like a daunting task with an infinite number of lines how do we find the best line but fortunately for us people like newton and others have worked on the field of calculus and using calculus we can find the best line but we're not going to do that because we'll be using the r package to perform all of our computations and therefore all we need to know is how do we provide inputs to the r package and how do we interpret correctly the outputs that the R package provides. And of course, we need to learn how to use linear regression in a proper way. We will learn all of those things, but we will not actually get into the mathematics of how linear regression computations are actually performed. 